Hey everybody, it's Drew from 198 Methods. Um, we had one of those uh, posts that had a lot of slides and graphs. It's not our annual charts and graphs <laughs> update, but it is like that. Um, so we thought uh, we'd make a quick video just to kind of walk you through some of the data. Um, and a lot of what's going on is that there are a bunch of new uh, reports that keep coming out, which are bad news for the climate and in particular for the Biden administration's approach to climate. And they all have one thing in common, uh, which is fossil fuel and especially fossil gas, methane gas exports, uh, sometimes called LNG. So you've seen these graphics from us We've got two versions of a, a similar uh, comment and petition, which we're actually delivering tomorrow at the U.S. Department of Energy uh, with some friends and allies. And so we want you to sign both of those, uh, or at least one of them today, uh, if you can, and we'll explain why. Um, so the first thing is that the newest report that has come out, uh, this is from our friends at the Center for Biological Diversity, uh, specifically compares the climate impacts of all those new fossil fuel projects that the Biden administration is improving. This includes uh, things like gas pipelines, see up there at the, the top uh, red part there, uh, that would include things like the Mountain Valley Pipeline. But the biggest chunks, as you can see, are LNG or methane gas exports and crude oil exports. Um, and that the climate impacts from all those new projects, again, this is new fossil fuel infrastructure being built under the Biden administration, uh, far outpaces the climate impacts that are being avoided uh, from the Inflation Reduction Act um, and other climate policies. So you can see the size of the bars there. Um, and this latest Center for Biological Diversity report is the, the third in a rapid fire series that have come out right around the week of Thanksgiving um, and just after. Um, so the one we mentioned before uh, last week to a lot of you was an oil change international uh, report, which this is drawn from. Um, and this shows, again, the same basic trend, uh, even though the Inflation Reduction Act and other policies are pushing down U.S. demand for crude oil in this case, um, we are still producing more oil than we were in the past, uh, and that uh, especially we're exporting uh, more. And in the case of crude oil, um, uh, the numbers match up perfectly, even though demand is projected to go down 10% by 2035, production is actually going to go up by 13%, and 100% of that, all of the oil, uh, new oil that we're drilling, as well as uh, all the oil that we would have avoided burning uh, by switching uh, U.S. heating systems not to use oil and switching our cars to electric vehicles, all of those savings are more than wiped out uh, by the oil exports. But where this gets really dramatic is in the case of LNG or gas exports. Um, and here again from Oil Change International, you can see even though demand is going down a little bit, we're making some progress locally, supply production is going up, and that is all driven by the export markets. The U.S. is now the biggest LNG exporter in the world, and that is expected to climb dramatically in the next couple of years. And as we've documented in previous posts, most of this gas is not going to Europe. There's been an argument for the last two years since uh, Russia invaded Ukraine and destabilized the European gas markets that we needed to export more gas so that European allies could make a safe transition to clean energy. That's not where most of this gas is going. Most of this gas is going to Asia uh, and it's going all over the world uh, in Africa and all kinds of other places, um, but it's mostly not a domestic European Union problem that we are solving uh, by exporting all this new gas. Um, and then one other uh, one that you might have missed in the shuffle of CPD and Oil Change International, we already mentioned, uh, another U.S. climate researcher put out a report as well last week that shows, again, same basic thing. Uh, even though the U.S. is making some progress on reducing domestic demand for oil and gas, that is way more than offset uh, by our exports of those products. And just the process of uh, fracking gas out of the ground, drilling oil out of the Gulf of Mexico, putting that into production and then exporting it uh, in all of these ways creates a huge climate impact. And so the uh, impact uh, of U.S. Uh, fossil fuel exports would account for 2.9 gigatons of global warming pollution by 2030. Um, and that is just a huge increase. Uh, again, uh, as we've said before, leading in the wrong direction. The Biden administration is leading the world in the wrong direction in terms of overall climate impacts because they are so reliant on fossil fuel exports. Um, and all of this is just, you know, more grist for the mill. There have been a ton of new reports. 
uh, that we talked about starting a couple of weeks ago. Starting in November, lots of people put out new reports on climate change uh, and their impacts. Um, and we've gotten these from the US government itself, put out its uh, fifth climate assessment, uh, which showed that there are huge impacts to global warming on US citizens and taxpayers. Uh, American lives are lost, American tax monies are spent recovering from climate disasters that could be avoided if we actually did the right thing and lived up to our commitments under climate change. Um, there have been independent analyses like the one that's right behind my head uh, from uh, World Resources Institute and others uh, who were very uh, promising. They were very pro-Inflation Reduction Act and have talked a lot about the benefits uh, of the Inflation Reduction Act and other U.S. policies that have been passed in the last few years at reducing emissions. But even they admit that uh, because of exports primarily, the U.S. is still not meeting its goals uh, under the Paris Climate Agreement. Uh, and special shout out uh, to our friends at the UN Environmental Program, uh, who made just a great report cover um, and a, a slightly depressing but really spot on message uh, that uh, even after years and years of United Nations scientists telling us over and over again that we're not doing enough to reduce emissions, we're not doing it fast enough, we are not on track to hit the goals of the Paris Climate Agreement. Um, uh, once again, the uh, annual emissions gap report that comes out right before the United Nations Conference of Parties or COP talks, which start this week in Dubai, um, well, once again shows that uh, even though temperatures have gone up and there's more data than ever to support the idea that the climate crisis is a genuine emergency, uh, world governments, including the United States, are not doing enough to actually cut emissions. Um, so again, back to that uh, original, the newest report that came out from Center of Biological Diversity, and all of these reports are telling the same basic story, which is even though some progress has been made, especially on promoting renewable energy and things like the switch to electric vehicles in the U.S., uh, that progress is more than offset or more than wiped out uh, by all the additional emissions from fossil fuel exports. And the leading source of that, one of the biggest sources of that is this LNG exports, uh, which we've talked to you a bunch about. Um, and we mentioned uh, the climate talks that start this week in Dubai. Um, unfortunately, we are not expecting any kind of substantial breakthrough at those talks. Uh, for one thing, President Biden isn't even going uh, to the talks as a clear indication that the White House doesn't see them as a huge global priority, doesn't see climate action as a huge global priority, as compared to, for example, the war in Ukraine or the war between Israel and Gaza right now. Um, those are higher priorities for the Biden administration than uh, the annual climate summit. And this very much echoes the message we saw in September when hundreds of thousands of people turned out on the streets of New York and other cities to demand that the U.S. and other nations move beyond fossil fuels, get off fossil fuels. Uh, you remember the big climate march that we had there? Joe Biden didn't even bother to go uh, to the U.N. Climate Ambition Summit. And that was because they had said that a condition of showing up and speaking at the U.N. Climate Ambition Summit was that you had a real plan to phase out fossil fuel use and exports in your uh, domestic economy. Biden administration has put forward no such plan. So they weren't really invited to speak at the U.N. Climate Ambition Summit. So they just skipped the thing altogether as an indication that they're not really serious about moving past fossil fuels in the U.S. economy. But uh, missing the climate talks in Dubai, probably not the biggest uh, problem for U.S. climate policy since uh, new reporting has showed uh, we've been talking for months and months about the risks of letting the head of a major national oil company, um, the UAE's uh, oil company, uh, Sultan Al Jabbar, uh, was uh, the, the head of the COP talks this year, and new reporting in the last week or two has showed that he was actually using his position as the head of the climate talks to promote UAE oil deals around the world. Um, so he was going to other countries, just like the U.S. is saying, oh, we're a great climate leader. Everybody come talk to us about how to do things like the Inflation Reduction Act and build clean energy. And then actually what we end up doing is exporting a lot of natural gas and crude oil and other uh, fossil fuels to those countries. Uh, the UAE was essentially trying to do the same thing as the United States follow their model of climate leadership, which is talk about how important climate change is, host an annual climate summit, and yet use it as a uh, platform to promote more oil and gas contracts for the uh, domestic oil company. So uh, all this brings us back to what can we do about all this stuff? Um, the good news is uh, there is a huge LNG export uh, terminal called uh, Calcasieu Pass 2, or CP2 for short, um, which is right now pending permits at both the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, which we've talked about a lot uh, at 198 Methods before, uh, and also at the Department of Energy. FERC is considering the permit for whether or not the uh, facility can be licensed to be built 
uh, and operate to put LNG onto the ships. And then they need a second permit from the US Department of Energy or DOE so that they can then export that gas to foreign markets. Um, so two permits, FERC is the permit to let them build and operate the facility and DOE is the uh, permit to let them export gas, uh, LNG gas from that facility. Either one of those two permits, if Kalkasu Pass is denied either one of those two permits, it would probably stop that particular project. It would also, importantly, be the first time any of these agencies under the Biden administration have said no to fossil fuel exports. And in particular, we're looking for a decision out of either FERC or DOE that specifically talks about the climate impacts. Um, there are lots of reasons to say no to Calcasie Pass too, but if either of those two agencies, DOE or FERC, were to say, you know what, there's just too much global warming pollution created by this LNG processing facility, or on the global impacts of exporting so much gas around the world. That would be a huge step forward for the Biden administration. It's an opportunity. They have an opportunity to say no to these permits. Um, and there has been a huge movement in the US and around the world encouraging them to do that. Um, and Calcasieu Pass in particular has a bunch of problems. They have problems with their investors. They have some competitors who are accusing them of shady business dealings. There's a lot of reasons that particular project is really bad. But what we're looking for out of DOE and FERC is not just a decision, hey, that one facility is pretty bad, but a change in approach, which is to say that they will finally view LNG exports and fossil fuel exports as detrimental to US policy, energy policy in particular, uh, and climate policy in particular and that they will factor that into decisions as they're moving forward. So uh, we're hoping, uh, we haven't seen a decision yet out of DOE or FERC, um, and we're delivering a lot of these comments and signatures tomorrow to the Department of Energy in particular. Um, we're also gonna turn them in uh, an initial batch of the comments at FERC. Again, we have until FERC issues their final uh, permit to uh, send more comments. So this is not your last chance to sign all these petitions necessarily but a great chance if you haven't already, uh, send a comment to FERC and DOE, uh, sign the petition to Department of Energy in particular. Both of them talk about Calcasieu Pass II and this broader issue of exporting gas and its impact on the climate. Um, and you can find links uh, below in the blog post uh, and on our website, all our social media, uh, for ways that you can send both of those uh, comments to FERC and DOE and sign a petition just to DOE. And we'll deliver all of that stuff tomorrow. So uh, get your comments in. And as always, if you appreciate the analysis and the ease of sending in comments through online forms uh, and having us take care of the delivery details and things like that, uh, you are always welcome to donate to support 190 Methods and keep uh, all of these things free. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but we did not send you a Giving Tuesday email yesterday. Uh, mostly we did get around to it because we were working on uh, all these comment periods and other things. Um, but uh, we do really try and uh, deliver advocacy and tools and direct action that you can participate in without charging you a fee for it or without asking you to join as a member or make a donation all the time. Um, and so uh, if you do have a little bit of money to spare, uh, if you didn't make all of your gifts yesterday on Giving Tuesday to other excellent organizations like Beyond Extreme Energy and Beyond, uh, Better Bayou and uh, the Vessel Project in Louisiana and all those great folks doing great work to stop CP2, uh, if you still have money left over and you want to contribute to folks who we're working on that, especially on this big uh, comment delivery drive uh, that we're talking about today, uh, you can chip in as well to support 109 Methods. Again, all that stuff is in our uh, links in bio uh, and in the blog post. Thanks again. See you soon.